Hi, I'm Corey Stegerard Pace, part of the AI Cloud Advocacy team here at Microsoft. And I have the pleasure of delivering lesson number three, using generative AI responsibly uh, to you today. And, you know, gener using generative AI responsibly is important. Whether you have one user or 1,000 users or a million users, it should be really at the cornerstone of everything you build with generative AI applications. So let's dive deep into this concept and actually look at how we can apply it when we're building applications for users. So as an introduction of this lesson, uh, we're going to look at why we should really prioritize responsible AI. I mean, we put this, this lesson up early in this course, but we want to make sure that everything we do is wrapped around responsible AI. Then we're going to look at the core principles of responsible AI and how they relate to generative AI in particular. And then lastly, we're going to put these principles into practice. It's great to have some principles, but like, how do they actually apply to building generative AI applications is important to talk about. Our goals for this lesson are, we're going to see the importance of responsible AI when ge building generative AI applications. We're going to learn how to apply those core principles of responsible AI. And then lastly, we're going to leave with some tools and strategies that you can use today to put these principles into practice. So why should you prioritize responsible AI? Here at Microsoft and in this course, we want to focus on taking a human-centric approach to application development. And what that really boils down to is the user's best interest equals the best results for your application. And generative AI, we realize create, can create tons of value for your users, but that value can be lost in an instant in, in terms of when responsible AI is also not maintained. So we need to make sure that impact requires monitoring and that intent is not enough. We don't think people go into it all the time saying they're going to build an irresponsible generative AI application, but we do think that if you're monitoring it and making sure even if you don't expect these things, things to come about, is that you have the right necessarily systems in place to deliver a responsible experience. So let's look at the potential harms that we might have with working with generative AI applications. The first one is ungrounded outputs or errors. These are most commonly known things like hallucinations or fabrications. And they can be sometimes funny in terms of nonsensical responses, or they could be harmful like factual errors that might be used in other systems, or even contradictions in responses, whether it's stating a claim in one sentence and then contradicting in the other, or just even presenting completely irrelevant information uh, to the user. The next one, it's not so funny, and that's harmful content. Uh, large language models can produce uh, in instructions in whether it's encouraging things like self-harm, hateful or demeaning content, or providing instructions maybe for either finding illegal content or even acts of illegal content. So we need to make, our, make sure we keep an eye on that as well. And then lastly is the lack of fairness. I tell my kids all the time, life isn't fair, but generative AI systems should definitely be. And fairness really equals free, being free from bias and discrimination. So this is making sure that the output is not producing anything that has exclusionary worldviews or has any bias towards any uh, particular groups. This is particularly important, especially when we're talking about generating images or text. And this aligns well with Microsoft's own responsible AI practices, whether that's being fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency, and accountability. So how to actually use generative AI responsibly now that we understand the potential harms that could come about? Well, the first thing is to measure these potential harms. And we've, we've encouraged taking like a similar idea to software testing, but also making sure that you are doing things like prompt testing. And this, what this means is you're actually aiming for a diversity of prompts that you, uh, that might be potentially used from your user. And these aren't the ideal prompts. These aren't things that always like you expect the happy path for your users, but making sure, uh, that anything that might come about when you're deploying your applications to users or them using your application that you encompass that in your prompt testing. I would like to say you should start manual. So you're getting, you know, sending a prompt to the large language model and re receiving and evaluating that response. But you can also scale this to, to automation as well by batching these prompts and then also seeing the results there. 
The starting manual gives you a high touch and very clear understanding of how your, the large language model is responding to your use case. And there's four layers of mitigation that we're going to discover today as well. One is on the model level, building a safety system, using correct meta prompts, and then lastly, on the user experience side. So let's look how this actually plays out in practice. First is the model side. I like to say really easily, right model, right use case. Well, mo large language models can do many things, but some of them are either more specialized than others. And you know, using the most powerful model is not always better. Better, or you can maybe use things like a specialized model that maybe is more attained to your use case, or even knowing the sort of parameters, things like model temperature and how that affects responses, and even the option of fine tuning or have using a fine tuned model that may be even more geared to your use case or what your users will be using your application for are all great ways to mitigate on the model side. Also in safety system, things like content filtering. So making sure that the responses from the model go through, goes through a filter and does not present any harmful content. Uh, also using things like responsible AI and building out scoring and metrics on responses. And then lastly, moder monitoring the model and its responses are all great ways to build uh, a good pillar of safety systems. Next is meta prompt. And this is really how we sort of define the behavior or rules for the model in terms of how it engages with users. We can ground the model in con context or even using trusted data by using techniques like retrieval augmented generation, which is actually covered in this course as well. And then lastly, and most importantly, is on the user experience side. Building transparency to users in terms of that they are engaging a generative AI uh, application or a model is very important, as well as even putting things like constraints with inputs uh, from the user side so that you limit and mitigate the harms that they could bring about with their prompts. And then even doing some input or output validation on the responses are also great ways to d deliver a great user experience and a responsible one. And now let's say putting this responsible AI into practice. We've looked at the concepts, we looked at the mitigating harms, but how do we actually get started? Well, within Microsoft, we have things like the Azure AI content safety. These are API, API endpoints and tools that allow for this information to, uh, information in your responses to be presented in a way uh, that gets scanned before they're being delivered to your users. Whether that's analyzing the text, building things like prompt shields to scan text before for any user input attack, attacks, as well as ground, groundedness detection, making sure the model is grounded in the source materials that have been provided by users. We also have the responsible AI dashboard, which allows us to keep score essentially on how the model is being responded and being interacted with, with our users and gives you a good understanding and overlook of how the model performs over time, which is very important in terms of not only when we deliver the this generative AI application to production the first time, but the sixth time, the tenth time, or the hundredth time. And then lastly, we can do great things with monitoring via PromptFlow. PromptFlow is an open source tool, uh, but we can also use it to find out and understand the type of responses that are being delivered to users. And we have metrics around this, whether it's coherence, the type of responses, if it's coherent, if it's fluent, the groundedness, as I mentioned earlier, is it relevant to the actual prompt? And how similar is it to other prompts that we ha have seen before? These are all great things to give you an oversight and put those responsible AI practices, pra uh, principles into practice. And that covers this responsible AI lesson. You can check out more information in the full course at aka.ms slash genai slash beginners.